All right, so let's start by solving this problem in region one, which is this part of the region where the problem is defined as when x is less than a. So in this region, we can write the Schrodinger equation as always to be negative h bar squared over 2m d squared psi by dx squared plus u times psi is equal to e times psi. Right away I can sub in for u since u is equal to u naught, meaning that's the depth of the potential, I can right away just write in u naught. And so now I'm just going to spend my time rearranging this differential equation. So my first step is I'm going to still say minus h bar squared over 2m d squared psi by dx but I'm going to move the mu naught side to the other side, so I'm going to get e minus u naught all times psi. What I am going to say is that we know that, or we define in the problem that um, u naught is greater than the energy, and this is so that the particle would be trapped inside the well, meaning that the particle has to have energy less than the depth of the well so that we have bound states. That means that this number, this e minus u naught, will give me a negative number since e is smaller than u naught. So I can explicitly write that out and it's convenient to do so simply because I can rearrange that minus sign where I can say u naught minus e and I just pull out a negative sign. And so I know now that that u naught minus e, that potential minus the energy of the particle, that's going to be now a positive number whereas this before was a negative number. And so I've now I've explicitly pulled that negative sign out front, which I can multiply with the negative sign in front of the h bar squared. And so I can explicitly then get rid of that term altogether. I'm now going to multiply both sides by 2m and divide both sides by h bar squared. And so that now leaves me on the left-hand side d squared psi by dx squared, and that's equal to 2m u naught minus e, all divided by h bar squared times psi, and then I'm just going to just move all this stuff to the left hand side. So I still have d squared psi by dx squared minus 2m u naught minus e all over h bar squared times psi and that's equal to zero. And so at this point I can now use my trial function or the, basically the form of the solution that I know it's going to take, psi is equal to se to the rx. And I'll just move this stuff up here back up to the top. So when I sub that in, then I take the double derivative of that, I'm going to get r squared se to the rx. I'm going to subtract off 2m u naught minus e all over h bar squared se to the rx that's equal to zero. I can factor out my SC to the RX out of both of these terms and basically multiply it with zero so they disappear. So I'm left with R squared minus 2M U naught minus E over H bar squared is equal to zero. I can then move the right side or the right term to the right hand side. R squared is equal to 2M U naught minus E over h bar squared, and then I just take the square root of both sides. r is equal to plus or minus the square root of 2m u naught minus e all over h bar. So you notice now that since my right hand side was a positive number, then that means that I don't have a complex part to this solution. So the solution of my wave function in region 1 is just going to be equal to a e 2m u naught minus e square root over h bar x plus b e to the negative 2m u naught minus e all that's under a square root h bar times x. Now recall in the, the slide where I identified all the solutions in the three regions the only piece of um, what I have written here that I kept is this first part, this a e to the root 2m u naught minus e over h bar times x. And so we had no, we did not include the second term. And so the reason for that 
is where we can start to use a little bit of logic to say which terms we're going to carry forward. If I plot these two, I'm just going to draw my x-axis, and generically I'm just going to just draw a dashed line that just represents where minus a is. And what these two functions look like is I have a e to the root 2m u naught um, minus e square root of that divided by h bar times x. Well, that's a growing exponential. So that's something that looks like that. The other one is a decaying exponential, this b e to the negative root 2m u naught minus e over h bar times x. This is a decaying exponential. And the thing we have to understand is that to the left of this minus a naught, what I have written down, that's region 1. And to the right, that's region 2. So I know that anything that appears to the right of minus a, well, that part isn't going to exist because that's going to be taken up by a different wave function, basically the solution to what we find in the Schrodinger equation in region 2. That means that anything in region 1, that's what we keep. And we can see here that in for this term that has to do with this b part, this negative exponential, well, I basically have something that grows as I go off to negative infinity. And then here I have the opposite. I have this term that basically decays as I go off to negative infinity. And so I can't have a, a solution or I can't have a wave function that grows as I go off to negative infinity because if I do, this is not normalizable. Because this essentially grows up to infinity as we go to negative infinity. And so this term explodes. This, this, this part of the solution explodes, which is why we would then say that we cannot use this as our function for, or as our solution to the wave function. And so the only part to this that we can use is this first part, this a e to the root 2m u naught minus e over h bar times x. And it's because this one is normalizable. So that's why we end up keeping that and not the other term. All right, so then let's look at region 3 because region 3 will look almost exactly the same as region 1, so we can solve this fairly quickly. So region 3, we can start by writing the exact same Schrodinger equation as we do as a starting point for all of these problems. Negative h bar squared over 2m, d squared psi by dx squared, plus u naught psi is equal to e psi. And I've explicitly written in u naught right away because in region 3, the potential is equal to u naught. But we just solved this a second ago. The solution we ended up with was psi is equal to, and I'm just going to use different constants just to denote that we're in a different region, but it's just e times e raised to the power of 2m u naught minus e square root over h bar times x plus f times e to the negative 2m u naught minus e square root over h bar times x. And in this case, again, we have also the exact same explanation as to why we only kept one of these terms. In this case, now I'm going to draw where a exists on this plot. And again, anything to the right of a, this is region 3, and anything to the left of a is region 2. And so what we have here is this first term. This is a growing exponential. So it looks like this is its function. And this f term here, maybe I'll use a different color. This f term here, this is a decaying exponential. And remember again, anything in region 2, we don't keep that. Because that's going to be represented by the solution for the wave function in that region. And so again, you can see right away that this version that's in blue, this one that started with an e, the positive exponential, well, this is going to grow as I move off to negative infinity. And again, this part isn't normalizable anymore because this grows to an infinitely large number. So because this is not normalizable, then we would say there we would eliminate this term because we can't use it in our solution because, again, it, it explodes. It goes off to infinity. Whereas this term that begins with the f, the negative or decaying exponential, this term decays to 0, which means that this is normalizable.
and so therefore we can keep this part and that's why it appeared in the solution on on the previous slide finally let's solve this for region 2 so here are again same finite potential but now I'm going to be looking at region 2 I start again with the exact same starting point negative h bar squared over 2m d squared psi by dx squared plus u times psi is equal to e times psi again I'm just applying my Hamiltonian to my wave function and I get my eigenvalue e times the wave function back well in this case since the potential is equal to 0 in this region then I can simplify this expression I'm going to now multiply both sides by 2m and divide by negative h bar squared so I'm going to get d squared psi by dx squared equal to negative 2me over h bar squared times psi I'll move what I have on the right hand side to the left hand side d squared psi by dx squared plus 2me over h bar squared times psi is equal to 0 I'm now going to substitute in my solution to this differential equation psi will be equal to se to the rx so I take the double derivative of that and I get r squared um, s e to the rx plus 2me over h bar squared s e to the rx that's still all equal to 0 my s e to the rx terms they can disappear they get multiplied by 0 and so I'm left with r squared plus 2me over h bar squared and that's equal to 0 move that to the other side r squared is equal to negative 2me over h bar squared and so then I take the square root of both sides r is equal to plus or minus i root 2me all over h bar so what this means is that my solution is going to be equal to psi is equal to c or sorry I'll write it as s1 e to the i 2 m e square root over h bar x plus s2 e to the negative i root 2 m e over h bar times x and so at this point of course we can apply Euler's theorem e to the i theta is equal to and I'll write the plus or minus explicitly e to the plus or minus i theta is equal to cosine theta plus or minus i sine theta and so then I can write psi is equal to s1 times cosine 2me square root over h bar times x plus i sine 2me square root over h bar times x and to that I'm going to then be adding s2 times the cosine of 2me square root over h bar times x minus i sine 2me square root over h bar times x and so when I distribute in the s1 and the s2 and I can group together like terms then what I'm left with is s1 plus s2 times the cosine of 2me all square root divided by h bar times x plus i times s1 minus s2 sine of 2me square root over h bar times x and at this point I'm just going to let s1 plus s2 that's just going to be equal to c I'm just going to call it just a new constant times the cosine of 2me square root divided by h bar times x and I'm just going to let i times s1 minus s2 I'm just going to call that d so d times sine 2me square root over h bar times x